and welcome back to House of Props. I've been wanting to make this Stormbreaker for quite some time and the new movie seemed like the perfect excuse. So let's get started. To create the shape of the axe blade, I glued six pieces of 10 millimeter foam in a stack with contact cement. The six pieces give a thickness of roughly two and a half inches. I'm using foam floor mats that have a texture on one side, so I make sure to place the texture on the inside. While I continue gluing, go ahead and click the subscribe and notification buttons so you can be alerted to future projects. Or, if you're able to, scan this code so you can have this channel on your phone for when you're on the go. Once I have the stack glued together, I cut the shape of the axe on my bandsaw. By cutting this way, I can get an even smooth edge and not have to worry about aligning the individual pieces. Since I was already using the saw, I go ahead and cut out the eight hammer pieces and split the two side pieces. I also go ahead and bevel the edges on all the hammer pieces. You can find the exact degrees listed on the template. With the side pieces cut and beveled, I attach them to a scrap piece of foam for some added support. To each side piece, I attach two of the four transition pieces. When I attach the edges, I make sure to align the outer visible edge first and then press the rest of the bevel together. This will ensure what's visible is aligned correctly. Then I attach the top and bottom pieces to the transition pieces in the exact same manner. And finally, attach the two separate units together. To create the end of the hammer, I again cut and glue three pieces of 10 millimeter foam into a stack. and then give all the sides a 36 degree bevel. This was then attached with contact cement.
Next, I use my utility knife to cut a triangle to match the bevels on each side. Then I cut a 6mm foam circle and a 2mm foam circle. These will then be glued onto the end of the hammer. I marked an X so I can place the circles directly in the middle of the space. After I added some supports to the interior of the hammer, I closed the other end with a piece of 6mm foam. Then I cut, stacked, and glued three pieces of 10mm foam and gave the edges a 24 degree bevel. Ignore what I have written on the piece in the video, it was just me trying to figure out the math. The small side is attached to the center of the hammer. I made this piece by attaching 10mm foam and 2mm foam together. This was then centered and glued onto the last piece. The 2mm foam gave me the extra thickness I needed while at the same time covering the texture on the 10mm foam. While I was beveling the axe head, I had a couple of blowouts. So instead of replacing the pieces, I'm going to execute a repair job. To do this, I'm going to fill in the gouges with quick seal, but first I heat seal the foam. Once the quick seal was dry, I prepared to skin the surface with 2mm foam. I attach the foam with contact cement because I want to make sure I have a secure connection. When I attach the foam, I start by lining up the edge of the bevel and pressing this down lightly. Then I press down the middle of the bevel and work my way from the middle to either side. I repeated the process on all sides and this was the result. On the rear of the axe head, I'm attaching this piece made with 10mm and 6mm foam. From a block made by three pieces of 10mm foam, I cut this shape and beveled the two sides before attaching these pieces of 2mm foam with CA glue. I then center and glue this to the bottom of the axe head. Next, I cut this shape out of 2mm foam and glue to both sides of the axe. I used a ballpoint to draw myself some registration lines to make sure I get the placement just right. Then I cut two of each of these pieces out of 6mm foam and glue one of each on top of the 2mm foam.
Once they are attached, I sand down the pieces so their top surface follows the bevel of the axe blade. I realized at this point I needed to add some 2mm foam in this spot. I cut these out of 6mm and beveled two sides. These needed to be a tight fit because they are getting attached here. Then I glue this piece of 2mm foam onto each side. Since I'm working with 2mm foam, I decided to go ahead and add the edging around the hammer. I attached this with CA glue and I just needed to make sure I kept the piece in line with the edge as I wrapped it around. The same technique was used along the top and bottom edge of the groove. The last piece to add to the axe are these pieces which get glued onto both sides. You want to make sure that the point of the triangle is right on the line where the axe bevel begins. Now it's time to attach the axe to the hammer. Hey Groot, can we get a little help? Well, since Groot isn't showing up at my house, I guess I'm going to have to do it myself. I make sure both pieces are in alignment before pressing the two together. I nearly forgot to add these little pieces to the inside of the hammer grooves. I use a metal palette knife to really push the pieces into the groove and get that deep crevice. Then I use a hobby knife to score all the lines so they will open up when I heat seal the entire build. I use some quick seal to fill any gaps or holes in the foam. While that dries, I drill out an opening so I can begin building the handle.
Once all the debris is removed, I squeeze a lot of hot glue into the opening. And while the glue is still hot, I insert a 43 inch long piece of 3 quarter inch PVC pipe. Next, the pipe is wrapped with 2 millimeter foam. You could use CA glue for this step, but contact cement will give a better bond. Then I use contact cement to attach scrap pieces of 10mm and 6mm foam to the pipe. This will be carved down to create the shape and wood texture we need. To make the vine pieces that hold Stormbreaker to the handle, I take 6 pieces of rope measuring 22 inches long and wrap these with 2mm foam. Again, contact cement is the best glue for this step. I made sure to leave some excess 2mm at both ends of the rope, you'll see why in a minute. These vine pieces are then glued to the handle and wrapped up and over the axe hammer. The excess 2mm foam at each end will help create the transition from handle to vine. With the vines in place, I could now start carving the shape of the handle with my rotary tool and sanding drum. Once I had the shape I wanted, I wanted to accentuate some of the texturing, so I slipped the sanding drum about a quarter of an inch off of the support and carved the rest of the wood texture. By having the drum stick off slightly, you can achieve a deeper groove. Once the handle was carved, I heat sealed the entire build with my heat gun. The last step before painting was to add the filigree detail on the ball of the hammer. To do this, I used puffy 3D paint and traced over the script that I wrote with a pen. Once that was dry, I could base Stormbreaker with Plasti Dip. I spray three thin, even layers to achieve smooth, full coverage. This probably took about three quarters of a can to get a build this size completely primed. I'm going to airbrush this mirror chrome paint to achieve a metallic metal on the axe and hammer. Next, I base all the wood pieces with a tan acrylic that I mixed. There's a lot of texture to this, so I needed to make sure to push the paint into all the crevices. While I was waiting for the tan to fully dry, I dry pounced some black across areas of the metal and then dabbed with a paper towel. These areas need to look like a slightly different metal than other areas.
Once the black was fully dry, I pounced the same areas with a sterling silver acrylic. This will blend the black back into the realm of the original acrylic, but still leave areas looking slightly different. Now that it's dry, I take raw sienna and make a wash and brush this over the length of the wood. And when that's dry, I make a wash with chestnut and repeat the same process. The only difference is I dab this layer with a paper towel. Then I take a burnt umber wash and follow the direction of the texturing. When the umber has dried, I take jet black and make a very thin wash and brush this over the wood surface. By thin, I mean very little paint with a lot of water. With black, a little bit goes a long way. And there you have it, Stormbreaker made completely out of EVA foam. Once assembled, it is about 46 inches tall and the head is about 22 inches wide. I hope you enjoyed this build. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends and family, and subscribe to House of Props. And remember, if you are building any of my builds or using any of my templates, feel free and tag me at House of Props on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok because I would really like to see your fantastic work. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.